Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to LFS 2022. Today we are uh, with Emma Summerscales, uh, one of the winners from last year's Sustainable uh, Fund. And well, hello, Emma. That's the first thing. Hello. Hi. <laughs> welcome to LFS 2022. <laughs> Lovely to be here as yeah, I've I've attended for a couple of years, but uh, yes, it's lovely to be here. Well, for the audience to let you know, Emma is one of our loyal um, attendees. <laughs> uh, she's been there, and last year she uh, applied for the sustainable. Uh, fund to organize an event in Liverpool, uh, which we attended to, well, I attended with my little one and husband, <laughs> and it was a great. Um, so maybe we could start by sharing a little bit about the event, um, how it went and why you decided to, to organize there. Um, yeah, sure. This, it, it was an event that um, I had talked about with a um, friend and sort of fellow um, sustainable fashion champion um, Neve Mitchell from um, Small Steps she she was she is an event event organizer so we talked about this event that we wanted to do about sort of reclaiming your unique style um, I kind of um, I think it was, we talked about it before, before lockdown. And I think it was the last meeting I had before we went into lockdown was, and we were sat there going, well, we might have to delay it a month or so, you know, and there we were sort of two years later, but we'd never sort of had funding for it. We wanted to do this event. We wanted to just bring people together and we wanted to kind of switch the focus on, oh, you should do this because it's the right thing to do. We wanted to kind of reclaim the idea of having joy in your clothes and enjoying you know um I probably started well I did start upcycling in my teens but it wasn't at the time for any kind of ethical or sustainable reasons it was just because I like messing around with clothes and I like changing stuff and I liked um looking different and I liked sort of um I just I just you know I'd, I'd always look at clothes and think how might I change them so, um, so it was kind of trying to recapture a bit of that. And I think I'd recently watched the film um, and we used it for the logo in the end, Pretty in Pink, an 80s film, and she's upcycling in her bedroom. And that was me, you know. Um, and so we used that as the logo and wanted to sort of not, not necessarily up market it as a sustainable event, but just more of a kind of reclaim your unique style. So we did that and we we um, we had an in conversation uh, with Sophie Benson, who is a sustainable fashion journalist who I've followed for a number of years and very much has the same kind of she really enjoys dressing. She, you know, she's lots of fun about her clothes. She's very colorful. She's very sort of she supports um, small ethical brands. She does quite a bit of her own DIY making. Um, and I've always felt she was kind of on the same page. So I invited her along and we did an in conversation with her, um, which was just great. I mean, I think we planned for it to be about 40 minutes and it was over an hour. Um, so, um, and then I did an upcycling demo of um, primarily of denim and sweatshirts. So easy kind of at home, um, it's sort of visible mending techniques using Sashko and, and patching borrow um, techniques that I use a lot. Um, and then sweatshirt kind of slashing and, and tying and sewing and, you know, various levels. Um, but I think, I think what I thought was one of the successes was everybody just kind of, there was just such a lovely atmosphere of sharing. We had a few professional, you know, people who... Uh, from the university and, and other makers then we had people who didn't do making but were really interested in it um, and um, I think we were all we were all really enjoying being in the same space talking about this um, it was great I remember it was I think it was the first face-to-face -face event I attended yeah. after like all the lockdowns and everything and as you said, there was this feeling of like, I don't know, feeling like this sense of community, like all being together there, different backgrounds, different goals or expectations of the session, but everyone really enjoyed it. 
and it was that I don't know that yeah that good it was just a nice energy wasn't there in the room and then I think I'd invite I'd also invited people to bring along their own kind of um not to to do work on them on the day but we were just sort of like a bit like an upcycling surgery so bring it along and get a bit of advice and then that brought everybody in sharing their own expertise I think someone had a leather jacket which I've done a bit but I've not done it you know and somebody else had a few skills so yeah I thought it was a really I really enjoyed it it was a lovely event and while you're also a fashion student uh, and designer uh, you're an expert in making new garments out of secondhand garments which is I think amazing it's using not seeing secondhand clothes or used garments as waste, but it's new resources. You can just think of, of them as fabric or thread. It's just another resource. How would you define your profile as designer? So I think um, I think I, I think I wrestle with this. Um, myself to be honest and I even down to the name so because I think I don't identify myself with fashion as an industry so I do I'm a fashion designer I'm comfortable with fashion designer or textile artist or because I do like you know I've done a few exhibitions now a few sort of installations which are more about kind of showing the process of clothes making um I would say um I'm very influenced by Japanese culture, Japanese shapes in garments. You can probably see some kimonos and square shapes on the back wall here Um, because I've done sort of zero waste exploration in the past. And obviously if you've got a square piece of fabric, it's going to lead to sort of square. And so I've looked at kimonos and that sort of thing. And I love kind of how things drape on the body when they're from square shapes. I've always, I will never look at a piece of clothing and think it's ready for the bin. I just can't get my head around the idea. You know, I've always rummaged through my mum's kind of, you know, jumble pile when even as a kid, you know, it's like, you can't be throwing it. I was there yesterday at my mum's and she said, I've grown out of this, I've grown out. And I took half of it away with me and, oh, my daughter will wear that. And, you know, um, and so, um, I think it's just twisting, isn't it? The idea of waste, it's not waste or elevating waste into a resource because it is. Um, But I don't like things to look like the original. It's nice to just remake completely into an original garment. Um, So yeah, defining a signature style is a hard one really because I just kind of, I'm forever, um, you know, I, I learned weaving for the first time for a, a tobacco warehouse exhibition. And, and now I'm sort of thinking, oh, well, you know, I could weave with all sorts of other, you know, um, t-shirts or, you know, different fabrics and things. Um, I just love the process of, and the feel and the texture of, of fabrics. I remember on the first event, uh, we, we collaborated with Kirsty from uh, Liverpool Weaving Company. And she's amazing. Well, she's got like a proper loom at home, <laughs> which is just uh, un- like unbelievable. Um, it, is, it is amazing what you can do with like fabric transforming into thread to, to weave something new, which could be a rug, it could be a jacket, it could be anything. It's it's just about being creative. And as you said, it's really hard to define yourself like, oh, I'm a fashion designer or I'm an artist because at the same time you're evolving. The, this, as you create new new garments or new, new fabrics, you're evolving as whatever you are. Like your yeah. identity is like nonstop growing and growing. And I think the sustainable journey or responsible journey let's say of consumers and also producers should be like an evolving thing not just like getting stuck in this system we've got now like fast fashion that is stuck there and it seems there's no evolution from that but 
where do you see the future of fast fashion? Uh, like oh, pushed off a cliff with a bit of luck. <laughs> Um, I mean, it, 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 you know, it's, it's overwhelming when, when, you know, um, when you sort of, like, as you said earlier, it, it, it looks pretty dark at times. It really does. Um, having said that, I do think there's a growing willingness, um, to change. I think, um, I mean, there's a constant debate about whether it should be consumers or whether it should be. And I mean, you know, it's, it's the industry. It's got to be both. Um, I get frustrated with too much pressure being put on consumers to sort of change because it's it's, you know, it's a, a monster machine. Mm -hmm. um, but for, for my for my MA last year, I sort of just charted from when I sort of first. Um, you know, I, the, I came to fashion. I mean, I came to fashion as a career late. I've been doing it for a long time personally, but I, I, I sort of charted the various events and actually it, it was really encouraging for me because I was feeling a little bit, oh, you know, beaten down by the whole thing. But actually when I looked at it and I realized this, the, 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 this sort of sequence of events, there was a growing willingness and a growing move towards um, just wanting to do things differently, to slow down. Um, having said that, I sometimes worry that I, I, I exist in a bubble. You know, people I know are on board, people I'm working with are on board. Um, you know, when you hear the sort of stories of the, what, I, what is it, pretty little thing being at London Fashion Week or whatever, and all of this, it's just, oh, you know, no. Um, because that's not, that's not fashion. That's just selling stuff. It's consumer. Mm. It's just, there's no creativity in, um, you know, churning out design after design after design, but, um, but I must be hopeful that there's going to be change or else I would go and do something else. Um, and I, yeah, I mean, you know, somebody said to me a few years ago, there shouldn't really be anything, there shouldn't be something called sustainable fashion because it shouldn't be anything else. Um, and it, because it can be, you know, we could literally stop producing new, new stuff tomorrow and just use what we already have. And how amazing would that be? But it isn't going to happen. So, um, well, but on the other side, you got like uh, producing countries and manufacturing countries that say, if we you stop, like this industry, like 70% of the population in our countries will just be like with no jobs and like it could be, it's really compli but, complicated. But we don't have to, you know, we don't have to, we don't have to have those people churning out hundreds of garments. Mm, yeah. We can have those same people employed taking longer per garment so that we're prepared to pay a bit more per garment. Um, you know, I think, um, I just think, I just, I mean, my MA is, is it, my dissertation is about sort of reconnecting with the emotional value in clothes. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and kind of those same skills, those same people could be used to just work, work slower on fewer garments and, um, you know, let's reduce the profit margins and let's pay those people a decent wage and, and um, the whole, I mean, it's just all broken, isn't it? It's just the whole industry is. It's, it's the business model. It, it doesn't make sense anymore. And especially like if we think that in 20 years, there might be no, not, not customers for those brands because the impact the industry has in the environment, in the local communities is that big that is destroying everything. So it, it needs a complete uh, restoration or refurbishment of the business model to to actually think ahead of the future and reduce the impact because you might be producing clothes for people that doesn't even exist or can't wear them because pollution is that big or well it's going to be too hot to live in most of the countries so it's just producing for for the sake of producing and making profit 
Yeah, uh, it, it, it's nothing to do with what people need. Yeah. There's no, there's no consideration of that at all. We're producing meat, somebody's profit margin and somebody's greed. I think it connects with the, the theme of your uh, dissertation, that emotion behind the clothes. I remember like I couldn't get rid of clothes when I was younger because it had so many memories attached to it. It had like all these experiences I had with wearing a shirt and trousers and dress it doesn't matter I remember I was like no mom I can't get rid of this but it doesn't fit anymore well but I played in the garden with my best friend and we did this now it doesn't do, people don't have that attachment it's just a t-shirt you use on a Saturday to go out and that's it after that you get rid of it and that that human side of the relationship with our clothes it, it's lost I mean, I, you know, when, if I, if some, if I'm invited out somewhere, I, my first thought is never, I'll go and buy something new. It doesn't occur to me. I will go to my wardrobe and I will choose something that I've worn before, because if I'm going out for a special occasion, I want to wear something that's special and things are special to me because as you've just said, exactly that, the, um, the attachment, the memories I have, um, I've had, I have a lot of clothes that are handed down to me that, that were my dad's or my mum's or, um, and even to be honest, even, even the, the things I buy secondhand, I kind of romanticize about the story behind them. And I, I know they're special because of that, you know, and, um, and, and this idea of, oh, I'm going out. So I need something new. I need something different. I mean, that I, I don't know how that will change because that is, also fueled by Instagram and no, I can't be seen twice in something and, you know, but um, again, I think, I guess it's just high profile people doing things differently. I mean, there are some coming through um, and it's, it's just, it's just kind of those influences really, hopefully that, that will start to, change the mindset I mean my you know my daughter is 14 and I think her age group are starting to question it much more um she certainly I mean obviously she's influenced by me um but she loves experiment you know I, I'm I'm you know I, I sort of grew up in 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 the 80s and you know and I loved all I love all the experimentation and you know and I love it when I see someone in the street and I I just I don't really it doesn't matter how ridiculous they look or if it doesn't you know if it's not my taste or what I just love the idea that someone's experimenting with their look and they're trying new things and I think we need to get rid of that fear of being judged for kind of you know and that's unfortunately what this social media culture is kind of you know where everybody's commenting on everybody else it's like just live in your own world and you know do your own thing sort of thing and um it'd be nice to go back to that I think yeah it it looks like social media is creating this uniformity we're all the same and we have to be the same if not you won't fit in and to some extent that it separates you from society or mainstream which can be good sometimes, and especially when you're creative and you enjoy playing around. But other times, like it's really hard to 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 feel excluded from that, yeah, aesthetic, let's say, or uniformity. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's difficult because it's not something I understand because I didn't grow up with that. It was a horrifying thought to go out on a Saturday night and be wearing the same thing as somebody else. I yeah. mean, it was just, that was, you know, that was the reason I, you know, started up cycling, you know, because it meant that wouldn't happen. Um, you Do you remember when like, it was like the Oscars or these award ceremonies and two actresses showed with the same dress and it yeah. was like, oh my God, they can't be wearing the same Actually, thing. So that, would, that would probably still, horrified wouldn't it that's really interesting isn't it because there is a you because then you look at luxury fashion and uh -huh. and, and that would still be horrifying you know you yeah. never do that and the bespoke unique um is still 
but then you know it trickles down to the high street and it's copied a million thousand times and um That's one for that's that's certainly some primary research for my for my MA, isn't it? I'll have to see if I can interview a few people about that um, <laughs> and get inside the heads of people who, you know, this idea, this celebrity culture of, of wanting, you know, because the other thing I feel that 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 is is I hope that we get back to more sort of DIY. I feel this one size fits all. I mean, it's a, it's it's the same with everything. It's education system, and you know everything. It's like you know um, the idea that all of us fall into you know uh, essentially half a dozen different sizes. In fact, it's probably not even half a dozen in some stores. It's ridiculous. And obviously, there's always a there's an article comes out about twelve in one shop is ten in another, and zero this and all the time. Um, and again, it's just marketing, marketing, dressing up for marketing, isn't it? Um, whereas I think what, what DIY and making clothes for yourself, it teaches you to kind of learn about your own body shape and how yeah. to show off those areas that, you know, you feel happy and confident about um, and, and enhance everything really and kind of... Um, the same shape dress does not fit, you know, and I, and I think, again, it's about celebrating those things, celebrating that uniqueness. We're not all the same shape and therefore we don't suit the same, um, the same shaped garments. Um, it, it, it is like that. It's like standardization of human types. And if you don't fit, well, find yourself a solution. <laughs> Well, it, it's damaging to teens' mental health because yeah. um, there's another way of doing it. You know, if you don't, if you want, you know, there's a million different garment shapes and they're not all going to fit the same body shape. But if this one doesn't, if the long, tall, skinny doesn't fit, then the, the gorgeous kind of knit waist sort of circle skirt might fit or whatever it might be. Um, and that celebrating of uniqueness, I think, is something I'd, I'd like to see come back. Well, those, like, uh, thank you so much. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> it's been like a conversation. Um, so to celebrate uniqueness, we're having Emma um, on Friday, 22nd April, that's tomorrow, uh, uh, organizing... Um, creative mending cafe uh, which is going to be great coffee provided with cookies and fruit for the healthy ones and thank you so much Emma it's always great to talk to you yeah <laughs> it is it is and if people want to just bring along things just to have a chat about as well and um, if there's something that you don't wear bring it along and we can have a chat about why you're not wearing it and but you can't part with it or those sorts of things sometimes the slightest change and it can become your favorite garment mm -hmm.